I've been born with a desire to be in a certain place. It always starts with places. And then there is a story that belongs to that place for me. Wings of the All my films have been born with a desire to be in a certain place. It always starts with places. And then there is a story that belongs to that place for me. Wings of Desire started, I was walking around Berlin. I hadn't been there for a long time. I'd been away in America for eight years. And I realized I liked it very much. I liked it even better now that I've been away for so long. After years on the road, the German director Wim Wenders seems to have settled in one place. His latest film, Wings of Desire, is a love story dedicated to the city of Berlin. Bruno Gantz and Otto Sander play two angels who, while invisible to mortals, hear their thoughts and feel their pain. Wings marks a change in Wenders' cinematic vision as he explores the city through dreams and poetry. And could you true. imagine setting a story in London? Oh, yes, anywhere. This story? No. The one with the angels had to be in Berlin. I mean, I guess there are some around here too. But I don't feel them as well. <laughs> I very much like the surface of them. But I guess London wouldn't have the necessary depths for you. Berlin really has a sense of history, or a sense of past as something that is present. And not just in some pretty old buildings that have been well preserved, but in the structure of the city, and the fact that it still carries, carries its wounds or its scars, that there's still all these empty wastelands where that the center of town is still like a no man's land. Das kann er doch nicht sein. Denn man putzt so einen Platz. Da war doch das Café Jost. Die Nachmittags habe ich mich da unterhalten und dann einen Kaffee getrunken. There's a sense of history that you don't find in other German cities. Also in the people. They haven't forgotten. And the rest of Germany, they, they pretend they've forgotten everything. They just want to live into the future. Wings of Desire marks a return to Berlin in more than one sense for vendors. In 1969, he made his first feature, ironically titled Summer in the City, in a bleak, snowy Berlin, a landscape of urban alienation and very different from the multi-layered city he found when he came back in 1987. Summer in the City was a story of a man who comes out of prison. He's completely deconnected with everything. He tries to see his old friends, but all his encounters are sort of depressing. They talk to him, they find him strangely disconnected. So at the end of the film, he leaves for New York because he's hoping that things will be different somewhere, maybe America. So that was my first film. And then 18 years later, I came back from America and made a film in Berlin again, which was, of course, completely a coincidence, but then again, somehow strange that it happened. Actually, I think it's the first film of mine that really stayed in one place and that does make a connection that even feels quite content to be in this place and that doesn't want to go and see what's behind the horizon. I felt that it was almost impossible to do justice to a city like Berlin with all its extremes and all its layers and facets. And I thought, how can you ever conceive of a point of view that will be able to cut through the city and not just show one aspect of it. And that's why I said, okay, I'm going to do this film with Guardian Angels. And I wasn't quite aware in the beginning how far that would take me, and that it was really allowing for a point of view that was unlimited. It was scary how unlimited it was. Every morning you get up and you'd see somebody standing on the side of the street, or you'd drive with a taxi, 
and anybody could become the hero of that day's shooting. Du tust auch nur so als ob. Sei doch froh, dass sie mich vergessen haben. Endlich bist du frei. Ich möchte auf der Stelle sterben und dann immer weiterleben. Beziehungsweise. When I was a kid and when I was really in trouble or really worried or when something painful was happening, I was unhappy. I tried to imagine myself as seen from from high above. It was my secret cure because it always helped. Whatever trouble I was in, the aerial shot of myself helped, so to speak. My favorite prayer involved seven angels. I said that every evening, who were around me, left and right, and above and below, they were just all over. And I remember very distinctly that I had a pity, that I felt pity for them. And I liked them and stuff, but I felt pity because I felt that their life must be terribly boring. And I was very scared as a child. The idea of eternity scared me very much. One angel who has already fled eternity is actor Peter Falk. I can't see you, but I know you're here. I feel it. You've been hanging around since I got here. I wish I could see your face. Just look into your eyes and tell you how good it is to be here. Just to touch something. See, that's cold. I feel good. Yeah. The smoke. Have coffee. And if you do it together, it's fantastic. I needed a former angel. It had to be authentic. It had to be an American actor. I, need, I needed somebody really known to everybody. The only one was Peter Falk always been so generous and caring as Columbo and so I called him up and I said hello this is Wim Wenders I'm making a movie in Berlin with the angels and I need for a very special part a former angel that's why I call you there was a pause and then he asked me how did you know and I said it just showed but look there's a train Tokyo, Kyoto, Paris, London, Trieste, Berlin. I like cities that are a little worn off, that give me more of an, uh, more of a desire to do something that's if it's new. With a new surface, I don't really know what to do with it. In Houston, vendors found a whole city of smooth surfaces. Houston was really like Legoland, like a toy shop, like the start of a competition of some children architects who said, I can build a building that's all green and all of glass, and the next one say, well, okay, but I can do one that's all blue and all marble. And then another would come up and say, well, I can build a pyramid. And so they'd build all these things to try how they go together. And it has a strange feeling as if you could also just take it away again and start it from scratch. In his recent documentary, Tokyo Ga, Wenders explored that most fleeting of modern cities, Tokyo, where he paid homage to the late Japanese film director, Yozujiro Ozu. I went there in 1982 and I tried to find out or shoot with my camera what I observed as the changes that have occurred since I saw Tokyo in Ozu's movies. Tokyo is like you would look in vain for history. It's like this conglomerate of styles that don't go together. There's no structure, no plan, nothing. I mean, it'd be very hard to, to trace any development. It's, a, it's just all there. It's bursting and the 21st century is already there also. Benders is currently working on his next film, Till the End of the World, which is actually set in the 21st century. 
He describes it as a global chase romance and is leaving Berlin to film in 18 countries and 25 different cities. The project will take him all over the world and into the next decade to film. Because it takes place in the future, somehow the idea is that after all, around the turn of the century, the places will look more like than they do already. And I have the feeling that cities sort of all become a little bit alike wherever you go. So the film will be about this too. Some of the places will be able to preserve what's their own and distinguished identity. And maybe some others won't. Is this round the world movie going to take you to London as well? Oh, I'd like to come here one day. I don't know it enough. Ah. I ran out of film.